Well, welcome back to Alpine Garage. It's been a while. So welcome back to the garage. I know for those of you who have been faithfully following this build that I kind of let you down over the last six months, seven months. Let me explain. So now we have the body and the engine, brake lines, and uh, we are in a really good shape from having the bones of the Bronco put together. But I haven't posted any of it in a video. So I'm going backwards now and I'm going to be posting every day or every other day kind of a catch up to what we've done and that will give you a better idea about where we're at. Now in this particular video we're putting the engine and the transmission and the transfer case in the frame and that's this video. Then in the next video you're going to see us putting on it's either the brake line video or it's the body being put on the frame. One of those two videos will be posted directly after this one. So, at, and then we'll fast forward a little bit to right now I've got harnesses laying all over the place that I'm splicing and dicing and trying to figure out what I'm doing there in order to get this 347 stroked Explorer 5.0 in working in this vehicle. So that's where I'm at. So let's get to putting the engine, the transmission and the transfer case into the Bronco, and then we'll see you in the end. I think it was east of Minnesota. No, it was north. Anyway, I remember what the long drive is. Eight or nine hours to get there, and we just decided this is trail shelf, so we just thought we'd throw in storage and save it for a rainy day. Yeah, save her for a cloudy, not rainy day. So, I don't know why that. So the hatch doesn't have a key lock. It's a yeah, good riches in here. White letter, like that. Got a car cover, foliage, some sort of mats and other fixings. The axe had four brand new tires. I didn't have Just the same roll there. And then I'm gonna move the other direction. Wire also. I didn't know. I gotta drop it a little bit here. Let me uh, let me undo this one and pull this one up. What you guys do? Putting an engine in a truck. See an engine? It's going in a truck. And then the Bronco will be done like a drought this afternoon. You want to ride on top of this? Ooh. You're all the way on. All the way on. Are you sure that you have this tightened? Up? Uh, it's tightened. I don't know. I mean, it, as it falls in, it wedges itself. Um, so the key is just to make sure that we can get the bolts in. Well, you smashed this one all the way down. I don't all right. So where where's the hole? That is the question. So I'm going to get a screwdriver. I'm going to stick a screwdriver in there. It needs to go in this direction just a little yeah. bit. Feel like. Like that. And then... We need to take off the rest of the tape. Um, I don't know if I want to smack it. I just want to push it. This may not be a smackable kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I just uh, didn't want to... I'm screwing it myself right pretty good. <laughs> Alright. So... That. We got... So, just a little bit of a... A little bit of a thing there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty darn even. That looks good. That is pretty <laughs> darn even. Yes! <laughs> All right. Now we got to pop the transmission in as well. Mm. And I should have probably married I them. Marry them I should have married them on the ground, but 
I just felt like because I needed to get the engine mounts in and I didn't know how difficult this was going to be because I can't remember doing it on the other Bronco, uh, that transmission just felt like it was going to be too much to level the engine and stuff. So I think that worked out good. Now we're going to do the, we're going to bolt this up, tighten it up, and then we're going to plop the 470W in there. The word plop sounds good. That should be that easy. <laughs> we're just going to plop it. But this one was her too, all the way down there. You want her to tap those on? What do you think? I know you So we got the transmission tunnel in, and this transmission tunnel was actually um, this transmission tunnel was actually modified for the Far 70W by uh, Matt's Garage, uh, where we got the Bronco. He also made a video on how he modified the adapter mounts. So he beveled uh, the top mount right here, the isolator. He also cut out the uh, washers as well, so that they fit in a little bit better. Uh, so because I had watched that episode, I knew kind of what I was looking for and uh, those fit in really well. He also cut down, uh, it looks like he purchased new bolts or cut down bolts as well uh, because I had the same problem with the adapter, the advanced adapters on the 74 Bronco. Uh, the bolts were just a little bit too long because the because the holes were not tapped all the way through so that took care of that. So we're gonna go ahead and mount that up. If you want to see that episode match garage posted down below in the description. And just like that we are all right and just like that we are mounted up in the frame man you know this is taking longer than it should have but we're really happy that we're here was it really or did you just say that you want to hold it no <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's heavy you may hold it while dana you dana weighs probably put your leg over that close to 70 pounds, 60, 70 pounds. <laughs> All right. So the shift forks go up. So I need to uh, flip this if I can do this without dropping and busting. Dropping my, dropping on my foot. these down and we have the Dana on yeah I decided to paint it blue way before I ever started working on the transmission and I've decided that I'm not gonna paint the transmission because I just I don't care I'm never gonna see it so uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that I did clean it as well as I could um, when I rebuilt it and uh, but you know so that looks a little silly Right here, it kind of looks like some kind of racing colors or something <laughs> like that, but I assure you it is not. All right, there you go. So we have the entire powertrain in. I haven't had the drive lines extended and cut, which we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to cut, we're gonna have to extend the front and cut the back like we did on the 74. But I haven't done that yet. That's coming here pretty quick. Right now I'm working on getting the harness completed so we can start adding the harness in and then doing the computer work necessary in order to make this 347 work for this vehicle. So in the next video, uh, we will either be doing uh, brick lines or we'll be doing body on chassis, probably body on chassis, that would be fun. We will see you in the next video. And thanks for hanging out with us at Alpine Garage. We're gonna have this thing running
Hopefully before Super Celebration. And Matt, you think you got me, but you still haven't finished your body yet. So, we'll see. Thank you.